you know who's not marketing very well? Who? It's mass mandate. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, the politicians this is of San Antonio, <laughs> it, and it's yeah, it's definitely San Antonio. But I mean, okay, so Abbott put out his no mask mandate a few months ago, banning people from saying you have to force people to wear a mask at any point. Mm -hmm. Well, the schools of San Antonio, Bear County, Houston, Harris County, Dallas, and Dallas County all put out temporary restraining orders against the mask mandate, no mask mandate, saying that students and staff will have to wear masks on the premises. Um, so the Supreme Court decided to come out and say, nope, you can't do that. That is unconstitutional. We are revoking this. And then about an hour or two ago, uh, I know for, you know, Bear County, at least, has released, has put out a temporary injunction against the Supreme Court's rulings. And I said, <laughs> no, our students and staff will be wearing masks at the school. <laughs> I think so, that they were, like, following, like, a lower court's ruling because this, the Texas Supreme Court couldn't um, rule on it. I think they did a temporary like no mass mandate, like it was temporary until their actual ruling, and then that will come right. down to it. So I think the current counties were using the lower court ruling as like their legal loophole. That was to my understanding. That makes sense. But, but then again, it's like the highest court in the area made a ruling. Why are you trying to overstep that? They're trying to protect their teachers. I mean, they're not trying to protect. No. So that's what it comes down to it, though. It, so mm -hmm. it comes down to it. If you believe masks work, right, then you put a mask on and you put your children's mask on. You but that's want, not how masks work. You don't want me imposing my ideology on your children, so why would you impose yours on my children? You know? Like, that's what it comes down to. So here's a thought. Why don't the people who don't want to mask up keep their kids at home? Yeah. Well, I don't the, but you can say that right back the other way. The people who are afraid to put their kids out of public should keep their kids at home. But, that, that's like... You could say it that way, too. But you really can't, because in Texas, we've seen a 50% increase in our COVID cases in the last two weeks alone. And then and there was also 200,000 illegal immigrants that came over the border of Texas last month alone. And but there's a about them right yeah. most of them carrying right. most of them carrying COVID, though. Like there's a 900% increase at the border itself of COVID cases. There, there's cause to say that the the people coming over or bring it also. So if we're not going to address one problem that's bringing it in, why why are we making such a big deal about I'm it? sure I'm sure if they if you isolate both of those numbers, yeah, it would be higher with illegal immigrants coming in, but just speaking about Texas citizens in itself, that number is higher in a lot of different states that have a large unvaccinated population. Florida and yeah, Tennessee. But you're not going to get anyone to vaccinate. So so that's what it, this is what it comes down to, right? Like, so the people who are doing the constant lawsuits, the constant are, are the people who are trying to force you to mandate vaccines, force you to mandate masks, right? So instead of them stopping, listening to the other people and working with them, they're just saying, no, it's going to be our way or the highway. I think a large part of it is that one group is really hung up on your personal right and the other group's hung up on public safety and health. So yeah. how can you get the two to merge? Again, if, but again, people aren't going to trust you if you're only telling them to do things and you're not doing anything to back it up. But how can we trust right? people when people in Florida, parents in Florida, one parent in particular, send their COVID positive kid to school and they got 80 other kids and in possible infections. Like that kid had COVID and the parent took him to school anyway. And then in Florida, there are four parent, four teachers who died because of COVID. Georgia alone threw away like 6,500 vaccinations of 6,500 doses. Those mm -hmm. four teachers were unvaccinated too. Mm -hmm. But it's just really sad. Yeah. But again, those people made their personal choice. And you know, like we can't we we can't decide 
what Florida people are going to do with our daily lives. Like mm -hmm. we have to eventually draw the line in the sand and stop telling other people how to live their lives. And but, I, think, I mean, we need to, when I think the frustration, I support, but I support the Supreme court of Texas's ruling that says you can say this is mandated, but you can't, there's no legal backing to it. Right. So like you can put up a sign at Walmart that says Ma mask required to enter. Right. Most people are going to put it on, but you can't arrest somebody for not putting a mask on. They can just mm -hmm. reserve the right to not. But you can't do that at schools. Schools are yeah. public. Yeah. Public schools, at least. And Again, so if it's a public space, then you have to take all public opinion into account. And if we know anything. But it's not a matter opinion, of opinion. It's not a matter of public opinion. 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 It's saying that people don't trust the vaccines. People don't trust the information that they're being told because they're only just being told they're not being shown right okay well here yeah. is like something to show like 42 point million people in the u.s young people ages between 8 and 17 have had covid that won't that there's not enough time to have studied this, but in what they're seeing now is children that have had COVID. It really messes up their their whole growth. They go through puberty. It stunts that process that they're seeing so far. Not only the psychological effects that it has on them. There's perfectly healthy children that have had COVID and they can't be vaccinated because they're not of the age yet. And they were athletes before and now they have trouble breathing. Like to yeah, me, but so coming in, but so like me, right now, it, it's not a public opinion matter. It's a scientific matter. These are yeah, the numbers. People are only choosing each. Both sides are only choosing to believe what their scientists are saying. It's, so there's no. So there's no working together. This even even so so like the courts. Like it comes back to the scientists and the courts, right? So I don't like what your court said. Even so, I'm going to go to a different one. And that's one of the big items that we've had issues with is I don't like what this doctor said, so I'm going to go to this doctor, right? And But this doctor is going to tell me what I want to hear. And that's what they're getting. A lot of people are being told just what they want to hear, and then they accept it. And then they try to enforce what they've accepted upon everybody else. Well, you know, something that's not being forced upon them is that Texas averages over 12,000 cases of COVID daily. Yeah. Daily. But again, they also are proving that like the Johnson & Johnson shot is less than 50% effective with Delta strain. The Moderna one is the only one that's above 60% effective with this strain. They've proven this so far. So, but isn't the some part part that we're talking about mass mandates, not vaccinations, yeah. but with vaccinations. Yeah, but it all comes back to why are they mandating the mask is because of the virus. If we're already proven that we can't control and we can't do anything about it, but then we eventually we have to start coming to live a normal life with this virus. And some of that means building a natural immunity and breathing some fresh air. We can't achieve herd immunity without more people getting vaccinated. Yeah. Or yes, natural immunity. It, it's happened for thousands of years before vaccines. And, but so like right now, the vaccine, right? We were told one shot and you're done. The virus will go away. Well, now they're trying to roll out boosters. They're preparing, they've already prepared for a fourth shot. Like they're getting people ready. So it's like, Clearly, somebody doesn't know what they're doing. Clearly, well, they're, we all don't know what we're doing. They're, they're having so, to do the, the multiple shots because people aren't getting vaccinated in much more rural, rural areas. Like India, that's where the Delta variant is from. And they had the highest cases of, like, February and March because of the Delta variant. It, it, but then it the, also dropped the face, like, it just dropped off a cliff, their numbers, too, after Delta passed through. So, so that the, the, you know, the studies also say that Delta comes through, we can't control Delta, but it drops off very rapidly, right? So we do, like, I'm not against some of the items. I'm just, or us being available to people. 
I'm against the mandates. Like I'm against somebody wa saying that if you want to walk in HEB, you have to have this mask on or I'm arresting you. You know, like you got to go buy food for your family no matter what, right? So mm -hmm. serious question. And it's not being facetious. Why does it matter so much to you? Like, I genuinely want to know that. Because the biggest thing right now is too many people are just doing what they're told. Right. And sheep, the pack of sheep always lead you off a cliff. Right. If you follow the pack, you're going to fall off a cliff. Right. So eventually the biggest thing is having people stand up and have individual thoughts and making individual choices right so mandating it takes that away so i see your point i just don't agree and i don't think we'll ever agree and I, that's okay I, just, I, guess. I will never agree with telling somebody else how to live their life i think when it comes to the subject agreed or good like sometimes it's necessary but if so, so okay what what is you could justify anything for the greater good. And that's that's some of the scariest parts, right? So some of the biggest human tragedies that we have ever made were put in the guise of for the greater good. Okay, then look at it this way. The greater evil. Which is a greater evil? Wearing masks to protect other people or the COVID-19 variants that could kill other people if you're carrying it, including yourself. So to to answer that, for me... Personally, the submiss submitting to a mask mandate is an evil that we've known throughout our history, right? The some unknown variant is something I don't know. So I have to make the choice about something that we've seen do evil or something I don't that might do evil. And I, I would I'd rather fight a virus than, you know human history when it comes to like going back to the mass mandate in texas and public schools um you know our our child is wearing a mask and mm. you know that does not let's say that's our choice for him you know even like playing with friends outside you social distance you can't you know go to anybody's house and that's our personal um procedure that we have going for this and mm. what other parents do you can't control that and I, and I get that. I just, thinking about it in terms of hurt children is kind of what gears me the most. I mean, this, our children's hospital here in San Antonio, the number of kids that are on either tethered to oxygen machines is pretty high. Like our projected hospitalizations are expected to climb over 15,000 by the end of August. Like it's scary to me. I mean, when you put it in terms of children, that scares me too, like as a mom, like I don't want anybody, any parent to go through that to see their child hurt or sick when it could have been prevented by everybody just wearing a mask. And that's where I'm coming from. But so, and I, and I get that, but sometimes like me personally, I walk, I go to work every day with a higher chance than 99%, right? Like I probably have a 95% chance something bad is going to happen. Just the line of work I'm in. So mm -hmm. I've adapted to the risk, right? And it's not, so to put it like COVID. So last year they projected 2 million people dead, right? And that in the U.S. alone was supposed to be about 2 million. We, we are not even what, you know, the adjusted numbers I think are less than a, or half a million. No, we're, so, we're at 600,000. Last I saw. Well, they just adjusted a bunch of numbers. That's what I'm saying. They just adjusted some numbers. So, but but again, so they we've been preparing for the worst for a, over a year. So when are we going to start looking on the positive side and expect that the possibility that COVID's not going to go away? And that's another part too, like COVID's not, it's not like, oh, and this is all over, you know, it's not like that anymore. Like if you have that thought, like you're pretty naive. Um, and what does normalcy look like? And I want to get back to normal too. I would love to be able to go to, you know, a restaurant or anything without worrying about who has been exposed to COVID or, you know, taking it to my mom or anything like that. Um, 
I just think in the meantime, we have to bunker down. And that's that's my personal opinion. I, I think into... I think that's only going to make it worse. Like avoiding a problem is only going to make a problem worse where I don't see at, it as avoiding a problem. But but if we can say so from the evidence we've been given, right, that if you took any shot but the Moderna shot, there's a 50 percent chance that you can catch COVID still. It doesn't that, make you immune from COVID. It just helps you lessen well, your symptoms. OK, so so then if they mandate that if you have a vaccine and you don't wear a mask. Then you're just passing it around, aren't you, at that point? Like, so that's where you come into all these mask mandates and all where everything points and they all counter or they they all contradict themselves down the line somewhere. Right. Like, I can't go to a restaurant unless I'm wearing a mask. But if I sit down, I take the mask off. What was the purpose of wearing the mask in the first place? Right. Like, I'm already yeah, exposing myself in that mm -hmm. if if you say well un unvaccinated people have to wear a mask but vaccinated people don't have to wear a mask but they can still carry the virus and they can still spread it then what is the purpose of the mask mandate in the first place like every argument that has been presented on mask mandates has fallen apart and we we've, we've seen this over a year like we have a year of experience on our own to know that I need to have hand sanitizer in my vehicle. So as soon as I get in my vehicle, I have hand sanitizer. As soon as I get out of my vehicle at the end of the day, I spray a little disinfectant. I head into the home. I wash my hands when I get home. Like there's all these things that we can be encouraging people to do and mm -hmm. processes to get in habits of. But instead, we have politicians arguing over who should wear a mask and who shouldn't when Ideally, we have to believe that humans are smart enough to make a decision. I'm not very hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I see what you're saying. Like, look at it from a com community outreach, like, initiative to get people cleaner, hygienic, or, you know, something like that. I can, I can see that point. It's just um, hard when you have you know, so many people who are adamantly against any type of vaccination but they're not but see that's so so that's the biggest misconception right because i get that all the time because i've personally made that choice right it's not against vaccines it's not against all this it's it's what's happening man it's like we we're the generation of infomercials if mesophilioma right <laughs> like we're that generation and we've already seen that the vaccine that they've put out because they did such a fast process on it is not as effective as we want, right? Like it's not what we thought. And so one thing I contemplate is if I take this vaccine and in a year and a half, they put out a different, more effective vaccine, but I can't take it because of what will happen if they mix, then did I make the right decision, right? Did I jump the gun? Was I alarmist? Like there's, there's so many questions that go back and forth and to, I don't know, look down upon people because they made a different medical choice than you is, I, I don't know. I think that's against everything that people have been working for medical rights over the last 20 years. Well, to see that's, and, that's, go ahead. And look at the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, you know, how many women were affected by that one. I, I can um, say I know more people that have adverse re reactions to that vaccine than who have had complications with COVID. Now, that's uh, not to like break any, that's not down to dismiss, it, dismiss anything, but I can only go off my, what I see or, you know, what I experience. I knew this was going to be a hot topic. I did not know it was going to be this hot, guys. <laughs> hey, you're passionate, right? And we're able to have a dialogue and gain understanding to why we think the way that we think. And I think that's the important part. I'm proud of you guys.
What are we doing this week? Yeah. We stand our ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, but at the end of the day, and, and, and that's like that's the heart of all the the whole argument. I believe against the mandates, right? At the end of the day, everybody has the right to their opinion, and we shouldn't be forcing our own opinions upon people. Unless they're on the other end of a mic and I'm yelling 